Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Muhammad Khalilullah Khan, I'm MD Internal Medicine. I'm a practicing consultant in Hyderabad. In my free time, I also teach my students for various entrance exams, including NEET Super Speciality. That is today on uh, 31st of August 2021. The National Board of Examination has released a bulletin for NEET Super Speciality. In this bulletin, they have may come up with drastic changes in the exam pattern the exam date tentatively is on 13th and 14th of november 2021 so what is this new pattern what are the important changes and uh, at the level of preparation at the level of attempting the exam at the level of uh, you know preparing of a merit list and then at the level of attending a counseling all will be discussed in this video subsequently so the important timeline of my video will be i'll first uh, introduce you to the need super speciality after that i'll be discussing the scheme of examination then i shall be discussing about the eligible feeder specialities what are the all the eligible feeder specialities for one particular examination then uh, then i'll be talking about grouping of these specialties i'm sorry grouping of these specialities then we'll be discussing what are the changes in the merit list how a merit list is prepared then we'll be discussing how the how a person should be prepared for counseling uh, so this this is all because the new regulations that is a new scheme of examination has been uh, adopted by the national board of examination to conduct uh, need super speciality 2021 the information bulletin uh, is divided into multiple sections in that the most important section is section number four that is the scheme of need super speciality examination the national medical commission has approved the following scheme it means that it is under the approval of the nmc draft regulation which has been published last month or few weeks back so what happened was there were a lot of changes in that regulation the feeder specialities uh, eligible specialities for a super specialty exam uh, many people uh, got omitted from that so there was a big fight many people gave you know email responses to nbe uh, including one from the government of tamil nadu which had got a very strong backing for the students and they had they had a very good fight and they have come up with uh, the draft regulation again got changed specialities which were omitted from being eligible for certain examination have been added so this is not important for our preparation of exam what is more important is this nmc has approved change in the pattern of examination and uh, it goes as follows so first important first and foremost important point here is that it's a group based exam it's a group based exam candidates are divided into 13 different groups shall be a common question paper this is very very important thing a single common question paper unlike previously you will have to you had uh, you know option of selecting two specialities now it is not like that it's a, a common question paper for admission into all uh, the super specialities that are covered in a particular group so what does that mean there are 13 groups and one common paper for one group so there will be 13 different question papers next important point says that in the bulletin the candidates from all the eligible feeder speciality so they are required to appear for a question paper of respective group all right and if they are willing to opt for a super speciality seat in in any of these uh, super speciality courses of a, of that particular group then a candidate can opt for multiple uh, question papers like as many as groups he wants he is eligible for but the rider here is for each group that you are applying you will have to pay the fees separately so what are the primary feeder specialities now so this is one group group number one all right uh, this is a medical group all right so here in medical group as you can see uh, the basic primary feeder specialty is general medicine md or dnb general medicine these people of who are opting for medical group can write cardiology medical hematology is included rheumatology is included then the critical care medicine endocrinology medical gastroenterology hepatology infectious disease the genetics medical genetics medical oncology and nephrology and neurology all these are uh, under medical group so person who is opting for medical group is eligible for opting all the specialties at the counseling uh, how is the merit list prepared and what are the different points in counseling i'll discuss in the end 
next uh, similarly we have got a surgical group a surgical group feeder speciality is general surgery in this he will be writing exam for cardiothoracic surgery pediatric cardiac thoracic vascular surgery pediatric surgery surgical gastroenterology hepatopancreatic biliary surgery neurosurgery then similarly plastic surgery urology then vascular surgery then surgical oncology endocrine surgery and thoracic you need not write separate exams you need not uh, prepare for all these subjects separately all right preparation question paper pattern also we'll discuss shortly right similarly we have got a pediatric group a pediatric group of uh, the eligible feeder specialties md or dnb pediatrics and they are eligible for neonatology pediatric hepatology nephrology oncology pediatric neurology pediatric cardiology and pediatric gastroenterology for now first first and foremost you understand what are the important feeder specialties we are discussing only feeder specialties so we have got obs gyn group wherein the md ms uh, dnb obs gyn is the <clears throat> feeder specialty and they can they are eligible for gynec oncology and reproductive medicine surgery separately uh, one more example is ent all right one of my friends is ent surgeon he is uh, preparing for surgical oncology and he's also uh, he, he can write uh, head and neck surgery if he wants to write surgical oncology he has to prepare ms general surgery separately all right 150 questions only coming from ms general surgery whereas you twist the scenario if a ms general surgeon candidate he wants to write head and neck surgery exam he has to opt for ent group he has to pay separately and most importantly he has to read ms ent books only for head and neck surgery exam right so the question paper will be consisting of 150 marks previously it was 100 questions is it not we need not remember this now because it is gone all right 40 from general feeder speciality and 60 from uh, super speciality that you are given that is gone now 40 60 format is gone now all the 150 questions you will have to prepare for 150 questions and this should be attempted in 150 minutes all right uh, let us now try to understand what are the important points uh, about you know how this question paper is going to be prepared a lot of speculations are there many teachers have their own opinion but let us strictly follow what the nmc guidelines and bulletin has given us so the <coughs> question paper will consist of questions from general or basic components of primary feeder broad speciality primary feeder broad speciality and they have also added this rider so one half of the question we don't know half we, we can't say this is the demarcation that 75 will be from general medicine and 75 will be from subspecialities sub, sub it's not like that but he has mentioned that questions will be from general base or basic component of the primary feeders uh, feeder speciality along with that from all the subspecialities you will have to understand this all the subspeciality so all the systems all the components of that primary uh, feeder specialty in that particular group i'll give you one example so suppose you are preparing for this medical group so 150 questions will be coming from general medicine uh, uh, i mean 150 out of these 150 questions questions will be coming from general medicine also questions will be coming from cardiology clinical hematology rheumatology all these subjects all right for now practically it's impossible to read all these books and somebody who has read harrison 20th edition will definitely know that harrison's is nothing but it's a concise format of all these monograms cardiology of harrison is concise of uh, brown walls endocrinology harrison's is concise of williams similarly if you read 20th edition harrison perfectly line to line definitely you'll be able to crack i'm talking about my subject for other subjects you talk to your subject experts the same pattern was uh, once uh, previously also it was uh, in 2017 if i am not wrong 2017 or 2016 all the same pattern was there 100 questions from all the general medicine was there and and uh, questions were not tough at that time all right actually subspeciality is a correct nomenclature for super speciality super speciality is an old nomenclature well let us not again go into all these points but he shouldn't have mentioned both the terminologies in the same bulletin either you use one terminology or you know i don't know why uh, subspeciality was used here subspeciality is nothing but the super speciality all the 150 questions are from 
post graduate exit curriculum exit level curriculum please try to understand don't go into too detail we have seen papers from so many years more than a decade i am in this field teaching various patterns uh, i mean right from you know different patterns need pg and all so uh, when they say that it's post graduate exit level for example i'll tell you if they say post graduate exit level in cardiology you need not read oximetry exit oximetry is not expected to be a post graduate exit level exam point all right i doubt that previously i used to say tell my students that 2d eco images might be given 2d eco gif images or 2d eco patterns may be given but i doubt that 2d eco uh, apart from regular ones you know i don't think 2d eco also will be asked in depth but definitely ecg questions will come definitely patterns of seizures from neurology will come all right so things like that next important point is who is the eligible person for uh, various groups now whenever more than one broad specialty here we'll be discussing certain scenarios uh, right so whenever more than one broad specialties are eligible feeder for admission into one particular super specialty subject then please note that the candidates of all such eligible feeder specialty group they have to appear the question paper of a respective group again an example i'll give you say suppose ent ent person wants to write surgical oncology then he has to first be eligible opt for a surgical group and from the surgical group he has to he has to appear in the surgical he has to read general surgery from either bailey or sebastian whatever it is uh, and then in that respective group he can appear for the exam now let us see what example the bulletin has given first important example that bulletin has given is a person who is eligible for dm endocrinology or dnb endocrinology that is general medicine and pediatrics so general medicine and pediatrics people who are eligible for dnb or dm endocrinology because endocrinology falls under the medical group pediatric candidate has to appear for the question paper of medical group if he is writing for say suppose he is going for pediatric endocrinology pediatric group he has to read nelson's only but if he wants to write dm endocrinology in medical group obviously he has to read general medicine next example is given is general surgery and ent now general surgery and ent both are eligible for head and neck speciality all right both are eligible for head and neck speciality which is covered under ent group so the general surgery candidate has to appear for the question papers of ent group what does that mean he has to read ent got it next next important example what bulletin has given us is uh, another scenario wherein multiple specialties multiple uh, feeder specialties are eligible for multiple exams so for example general medicine pediatrics pulmonology that is respiratory medicine anesthesia and emergency medicine all these people are eligible for dm critical care all these people are eligible for dm so which falls under medical group they have to read they have to apply for critical care medicine if at all they want they intend to apply for critical care medicine they'll have to read medical group and in this medical group we have got uh, you know uh, though they will get even they get first rank also they cannot opt for cardiology because uh, a person from say suppose anesthesia is not eligible for dm cardiology so he should understand that medical group he is writing for critical care medicine only and maybe during counseling and all he will be automatically deselected from the other branches and selected only for one particular branch for which he is eligible into right the last scenario is that by appearing in a question paper of one particular group and on qualifying that examination a candidate shall be eligible to exercise his or her choice in the counseling for those particular super specialty subjects covered in the said group right what does that mean for example emergency medicine candidate an emergency medicine candidate can appear for two exams is it not critical care and medical genetics which comes under medical group so he he'll be eligible for two special super specialties only is it not and uh, any of these he can opt for one annexure is annexure b you will have to understand this wherein what are all the super specialty courses to which a particular broad specialty is a feeder qualification or primary medical qualification for that anesthesiology 
he is eligible for super speciality cardiac anesthesia neuro anesthesia critical care which comes under medical group all right organ transplant anesthesia and pediatric neonatal so except from the critical care medicine all other come under only anesthesia group critical care medicine comes under medical group similarly this time md biochemistry is eligible for clinical hematology all right and then dnb as i told you dnb uh, or md emergency medicine is eligible for critical care medicine and critical care medicine he has to go for the medical group clinical hematology he has to go for the medical group right then a person who is doing ms ent or dnb ent he is eligible for two specialties head and neck surgery which he has to go for ent group and surgical oncology which he has to go for surgical group right next comes the general medicine person is eligible for clinical hematology nephrology medical oncology all these points i told you infectious disease a medical gastroenterology hepatology critical care and pediatric neurology see suppose md general medicine candidate uh, this is a very rarest of the rare scenario but if he wants to appear for dm pediatric neurology he has also to opt for pediatric group he has to opt for pediatric group in the exam if at all he is very particular about joining c what is nhsr c quickly we will try to understand nhsr c is reverse of nhsr b that is nhsr c will provide you details of all the broad specialties who are eligible feeder for a particular super specialty so say suppose if you want to attend cardiology course then a general medicine candidate can attempt it in medical group pediatric candidate can come and attend in medical group respiratory medicine candidate can come and attend in medical group similarly clinical hematology similarly we have got clinical pharmacology only for pharmacologists critical care medicine an important uh, sought after branch by emergency medicine general medicine respiratory medicine anesthesia pediatrics all these people have to attend medical group right all these people have to attend medical group say so suppose uh, this example i already told you hepatology general medicine and pediatrics both of them have to go to medical group and attempt it right infectious disease again they'll have all these the tropical medicine the respiratory medicine pediatrics general medicine all them all of them have to go for medical group to attempt it right so this is all about a uh, few of my surgery friends i'll discuss few points about my friends who are in surgery say suppose a person Uh, who is eligible for head and neck surgery ent person is eligible general surgery or uh, mch plastic surgery mch surgical oncology mch neurosurgery so if you want to do double mch double mch uh, you will have to attempt you will have to attend all these candidates have to attend the ent group right even after your mch plastic surgery you can go for head and neck surgery but the the point is that you will have to attempt uh ent group and you will have to read ent publication of merit list this is what is uh, the change which i noted now uh, the nbms will prepare the national board of examination will prepare uh, declare a group wise merit list there shall not be any equating or scaling this is very important there will not be any equating scaling or any methodology should be adopted for normalization I'll give you a realistic example you have got a say suppose rank 600 so this rank 600 will be same for cardiology also same for neurology also same for oncology all right it depends on the 599 people standing in front of you uh, who will opt for which uh, that is completely depend on that all right they, they if they all opt for cardiology then you might miss cardiology even after getting 600 rank but if all the 599 people have taken some other branches and you are the first person to take cardiology at 600 you will be the rank one for cardiology at 600 you will happily do it at jayadeva or gb pant right so this is what is important point about you know equating or scaling next the merit list shall be generated strictly on the basis of marks obtained by the candidate and application of a prescribed tri breaking criteria that important uh, point i noted in that bulletin regarding counseling is that the candidates who are declared qualified for a particular question paper for a particular group say suppose medical group and registration should be done separately now registering for participation in a common counseling uh, <clears throat> they are allowed to exercise as many choices of super speciality covered 
in that particular group for example got rank 600 so say suppose you you want to opt for eight super specialities and you want to try your luck in dm endocrinology which is very difficult to get a rank 600 you can do it next point about uh, counseling is that the super specialty seats will be allocated in accordance to the specific merit position merit will be the basis of allocation second thing maybe which i guess is that priority maybe you'll in the counseling you will be asked to prioritize option one option two option three like that so, uh, a general medicine candidate who is declared qualified for question paper of medical group will choose from all the available seats of all the super specialities it is very very important point because this time i think that there will not be any wastage of seats this is one important advantage of this pattern second thing is everybody is going to get some or the other seat my um, idea of this exam is 2000 2200 students take cardiology and uh, with an overlapping another 2000 2300 students take neurology uh, sometimes it happens that few you know people um, might miss you know a third speciality a fourth speciality obviously is it not because we had only option of two specialities previously but now with the same rank if you don't get cardiology don't get don't even get neurology maybe you'll get genetics also maybe you might get infectious disease maybe you might get dnb somewhere in india so this pattern will prevent wastage of seeds first thing second thing is this pattern will also help any rank of candidate to get uh, good so this is what you can see my slide was change is equal to chance it is actually a chance for you to both gain a seat and also sometimes if you are over speculating things lose a seat so my last point of advice is prepare well 45 days is more than enough to read important points in harrison's quickly proper revision and then uh, attempt a lot of mcqs for mcqs you have a lot of resources utilize those resources uh, be a hit and run in a subject don't go deep uh, there is a good saying that don't, don't swim deeper swim far is it not in the this is the last lap lap of exam so many people ask me sir what are the differences in different patterns of exams just a lighter note to end the video uh, neat ug neat pg neat super speciality uh, i call it uh, it's like models of iphone is it not basic iphone iphone mini then basic iphone iphone pro pro max uh, only difference is it's the level of torture is it not it's not level of advancement of features it's advancement of torture so neat ug you have little torture pg you have a different level of torture where exam date is not given most of the time and then suddenly neat super speciality means it is coming up with surprises so these exams are coming playing with doctors like anything making us run from pillar to post i definitely guess that people will challenge this in court somebody who is challenging this in court should have a very very strong backing tell your advocate that uh, to understand and be able to be well versed with the nmc draft regulation that my next video i'll be talking about uh, how to prepare for medical group somebody who is missing the medicine part it will be very very helpful for md pediatrics for emergency medicine anesthesia people or respiratory medicine oncology people i mean radiotherapy people uh, i'll tell you how to read medicine in 45 days and i'll definitely help you out with uh, you know revising medicine if you have any query then please 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 feel free to you know mail me so like follow and subscribe and uh, recommend me topics of next video thank you so much